If these words resonate with you, authenticity, understated elegance, and the grace of time, then we've got an episode for you. Listen in. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today we're talking about wabi-sabi. Is it a trend, an attitude, an approach, or maybe all three? I think it's very timely to be discussing this concept of wabi-sabi, and you may not realize sort of how deep it goes. So it is not a decor term that just popped up a couple of years ago. Uh, Wabi-sabi has been going on for many, many years, back into ancient times. And um, we'll go back a little bit further, but maybe not that far. And then let you know everything that goes into having a wabi-sabi home attitude and approach. Yes. And, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking wabi-sabi was kind of, uh, you know, let it go, kind of take it easy, chill out, don't get all stressed about things. And that's certainly a part of it. But when I started researching for this episode, I found out there was so much more to it. And some of it's kind of uh, my style and some of it really isn't. But it's, it's, it was very interesting to find out about. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. And today we're talking about a concept that you, know, you may not do anything physically about right now, uh, but maybe it's something you want to think about. Uh, think about how you can incorporate that into your home. Think about how you can incorporate it into your lifestyle. Because as I said in the beginning, this was not about decor. You know, So the wabi-sabi approach, it's a Japanese worldview, uh, which is basically, in a nutshell, the acceptance of imperfection. Um, and it w- they were not talking about their living room or ironing their tablecloths back then. You know, it was really a, an approach to life and a, and a way of uh, living. It continued to be sort of a, a doctrine of how to approach life. And then a few years ago, it started to sort of windle its way into the vernacular with regard to home decor. So how do you interpret wabi-sabi in your home decor is something we're going to be focusing on today, but also giving you some background on, you know, like really where did it come from and what is it? So again, it celebrates the acceptance of imperfection. So it's celebrating authenticity. There are certain hallmarks like a simplistic things, freshness, a quietness, like I said in the little teaser to this episode, understated elegance, um, natural things uh, that are not necessarily perfect. Like, you know, maybe maybe more of a wilting rose or a, a browning leaf or something like that. I mean, it can be a fresh thing too, but it also celebrates the imperfection or the, the wilting of things in nature. And that the idea that serenity and Grace comes with age, but real age, like the real patina, not something that was distressed and you find it on the racks at home goods, like the real deal. Mm-hmm. And that's probably a good thing to think about with respect to our own selves as well. No matter where you, you are. I knew you were headed there too. And I'm thinking about that too, that uh, so much of the Asian culture there's such great respect for the elders and the respect for the wisdom they have. And so I think that this is something that's gotten lost these days uh, as people kind of worship the youth and the younger generation. And I think there's a lot to be said for appreciating the older people and the wisdom they have. So I, yeah, I think it's a wonderful thing to appreciate age, embrace it, and just kind of wherever you're, wherever you are. Yes. Other characteristics of wabi-sabi in decor would be asymmetry, sort of a roughness, again, simple, organic materials, economy, modesty, and sort of a, a very, it doesn't have to be a neutral color palette, but things that you would see in nature. So, you know, not chartreuse, probably. Uh, you know, not, I haven't seen that. <laughs> you haven't seen that. But, you know, I mean, you know, I guess you can say, oh, well, you can see fuchsia and colors like that in a sky. But but then the natural colors that you would associate with. So 
Um, unless, Anita, you have anything else you want to add about the overall concept no. of Wabi Sabi, maybe we can go into now. Well, how do you translate that into your decor? And of course, put our own sort of Western twist on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we're not in ancient times either. So our sort of modern world Western twist on it is obviously a little bit different than what was going on way back when in ancient Japan. Um, so how do you translate this attitude and approach to life into your home decor? Well, there are certain things that you can actual physical things that you can add or as Anita often likes to say, things you can take away. <laughs> Well, what I wanted to start with is is kind of the concept of embracing the age of things mm -hmm. first. Uh, and that, to me, if you collect antiques, then boom, you are there. Because antiques are already going to be roughed up a little bit. There's not then, And you're going to be used to the concept of imperfection. That is the beauty of an antique, is the aging process and how somebody's unit used it and it's worn. And you can kind of picture how maybe somebody used it 100 years ago. So I think one of the pieces of this is to include old things in your house, to include antiques or Maybe it's not even an antique. Maybe it's something you have in your house that your kids knocked over. They kicked it. They chipped it. They dropped things on it. So it's kind of beat up a little bit. I think the thing to think about is how that piece of furniture or whatever it is has served you and and to re be reminded of all the wonderful experiences your family has had with that chair or maybe uh, that armoire that maybe held your, your kids' clothes or something. I think that is kind of part of the embracing the age. Yeah, well well said. It doesn't have to be just antiques. Examples of some pieces, smaller things that you may add or maybe pull out from the back of your cupboards, those dough bowls and things like that. I think the idea, too, of things that people had used on a daily basis – as well. That kind of works into the modesty uh, aspect of it. It's not necessarily this fine piece of what have you that you would have behind glass. I think the wabi-sabi idea is things that you would use on a daily basis. Like mm -hmm. you know, Anita uh, in particular and I as well, we love the old silver, even if mm -hmm. it's silver plate, you know, uh, the forks yeah. and the spoons and like that. Adding something like that where, you know, somebody else had their hand on it and maybe it's not polished to perfection. Mine certainly aren't. And, you know, and you embrace that. So these are little things. I don't know if we can think of other things, we can add them in as the episode goes on. But those are just little things that you can pick up that are not very expensive that if you don't have on hand already, you could add. But I love Anita this whole idea of like, you know, looking at that, you know, maybe your kid took a pen to your dining room table at one time or, you know, <laughs> something like a, that. I have a hard time moving past that one. But right. <laughs> that might have to get Wabi Sabi in the works not we're not but, all the way there right okay um, but let me let's just talk about it a little bit more though sure um, so I, I mean i would even extend it to um you know just just kind of letting things uh not be just this embracing the imperfections and uh, what you were saying about the patina that's kind of what i wanted to talk about because there's so many materials that develop this patina excuse me, patina over time that you cannot get with a new piece. And so it actually, in some cases, makes the piece more beautiful than it was before. Some of the old silver has a patina that's simply beautiful that you cannot get with a new piece of silver. So that's kind of what we're talking about is uh, looking at these old pieces and enjoying the patina and so many things like copper as it uh, ages has a beautiful patina so there's a lot of things that change the way they look as they age and that's kind of what this is talking about natural materials as well so move away from the plastics as much as you can and you know so many of the things that you're going to hear us talking about in this wabi-sabi approach to decorating it things that we have talked about before with you in regards to all different aspects of decor they're sort of it, collecting them together you're going to get this wabi-sabi thing going on in your home which i think is going to be it's a really nice way to live so replacing the plastic with natural materials this could mean 
using the decorative storage that we've talked to you about before, like me with my white pictures, I keep the batteries and the rubber bands and things like that. So it's a, it's a nice uh, item, not too grand, something you can use every day. It's old. It's, it's kind of got, it's like ticking all the boxes of Wabi Sabi and it's not just a plastic box. Even your toothbrush, you don't have to have a plastic toothbrush or you don't have to have, why are all the toothbrushes like purple and white and blue and white? Like, why are they so ugly? I I actually buy my toothbrushes from Trader Joe's. Uh, do you, does your Trader Joe's carry them? Because they have the, they have extra soft, very soft, whatever they call it. So they have a nice so they, variety. Are they bamboo? Is that what you're getting? They're not bamboo, but I get the white ones. Well, I use a I Sonicare. I use a Sonicare, so. Oh, I yeah. have to get just to get the replacement heads. They're white. So, yes. But apparently, the company that I really like, Muji, I gave uh, Muji to you guys as a crush one time. Uh-huh. I They have beautiful, s- simple products like that. So, if there, if there was a company that I would say is really embraces wabi sabi, that is also a well priced items, is Muji. So, we can link to them again. And they have such beautiful home products like you know you don't have to have a lot of ugly plastic bottles even you're sure it takes a little effort to pour the shampoo or the what have you out into something else but you know maybe it's worthwhile to you if you're highly sensitive to that sort of thing and and being surrounded by beautiful things really matter to you well now in the shower i'm not using glass because of breakage and that would right but you don't have to have you know a green bottle with a big label on it either you can oh, have a right. clear plastic bottle right but what you're saying too i love the idea of using beautiful storage and there's so much beautiful storage there's no reason for people to have to use a bunch of plastic tubs for things so i have cardboard boxes that are beautiful black and white boxes that i use in my closet that hold things and they all match also i'm thinking about our laundry baskets because when i grew up Everyone had a plastic laundry basket. Everybody. Well, mine are kind of those foldable. They're fabric, but they kind of stand up and mm-hmm. they will scrunch down. Yeah. I use those. So there's a lot of uh, options for holding things. Just keep looking. You don't have to use plastic to, to store things. There's so many different beautiful options now. Right. And it might not be things that you even think about. It's just like, oh, I always I just, that's what I put the thing in and it happens to be plastic. So you're again, you're just having these blinders on, you're not seeing it. So think about it. This is a great time to be doing this. Even if you aren't in a position to replace these items right now, you could make a list of things that you wanted to get, or you could just you know, see how are my how am I using plastics in my house? How can I eliminate those? How can I go to using some of the decorative pieces I have as my storage? And then as I can, adding in maybe some canvas storage material uh, or wooden options or something like that. I had touched on the natural palette. So if you're wanting to go wabi-sabi, you know, maybe you want to sort of take it down a notch. Think about the, the colors you'd find in nature. Like I would think more of not only our fave neutrals and all that, so the whites and the greases and the taupes and the grays and all that, but the greens of mosses, the greens of plants, the colors like that, soft colors, the blues of the sky and blues of the ocean, those are kind of the colors you want to be looking for, even browns of the dirt, uh, you know, and they can range. It doesn't have to be all light colors. It can be some dark colors, but you're not going to see hot pink necessarily. Well, right, and you might even see some pink or purple or something, but we're talking about a more of a color that you would see in nature. So neon fluorescent colors are not really what we're talking about. We're talking about more of like a natural dyed color. So it would be more subtle colors. In right. General. Subtle. Good word. Good word to use. Yes. And then the approach when using Wabi Sabi is really no fuss. And I just love this. It's no ironing, no need. I'm Wabi Sabi. <laughs> I just, I used to just say, I don't like to iron and I don't, and I don't polish silver and I don't do that, but yeah, it's embraced. So this is my, this is my calling, the Wabi Sabi. I do. I, I love ironing. I know I love you ironing. do, it's but fun. that's okay. It's fun. But I will say this. I, if I have something that's linen and it's wrinkled, it doesn't freak me out like it does some iron or people who like to iron because when I see the wrinkles in something that's linen to me, the reason I can embrace it is because I look at that and say, 
I know that that's real linen because it's so wrinkled and the way it looks. If it doesn't wrinkle at all and they say it's 100% linen, I know they're lying. So, oh. uh, you know, so I kind of, but it's, but it's kind of that embracing of, of the natural. So when I see that it's wrinkled, I go, oh, that's my sign that this is the real thing. So I just kind of do, like you said, kind of an embrace of it because, you know, I might be ironing a, sh- a linen shirt, but once I put it on, of course, it's going to get wrinkled right away. And I just go, well, you know, that's kind of part of it. But also uh, this no fuss. Let's talk about, too, like the scuffed floors. Uh, our floors at the farm have, and it's pine, so not a hardwood. They are covered with collie scratches. And I am just having to embrace. It's a work in progress. Should I phrase it that way? And I can't. Aren't we all? I can't fix it because it's just going to happen again. So it just, it is what it is. It's there. And you know what? I love my dog. So this is a funny little thing that happened uh, the other day, you know, because we're all home and we're really focused in on, you know, every little thing the dogs do because everyone's like, oh, they're so cute. Look at them sitting that way. Oh, they're so cute. Look at this. Way. And Emmett does this little thing in the afternoon. He'll go over to, they have a special drawer in the kitchen where their treats come out of. And he kind of rubs, not rubs, but it didn't even look like he was ever making contact. He kind of like puts his nose right towards the edge. Like he's kind of smelling it. He knows that's his, his drawer. And then he'll do that. And then he'll come over and he'll sit right in front of me and look at me with those big brown eyes. Like, come on, please give us a treat. <laughs> so I, uh, my girls were sitting on the ground and I, he was doing that. And that, so I got down and to give him a little pet. And I looked over and right on the corner of that drawer, which is in between the fridge and the freezer in my kitchen and on the white cabinet there's little marks like from his little nose like you know whatever Aww. like you know little maybe his little nose he's digging or something and he comes in and he does it and so and I really I said to the girls I can't take that off because <laughs> that's Emmett like Aww. talking to us you're right? yeah, so cute yeah. so all those little things like you're saying you look at the floor and there is you know molly's marks or you know I, you, when your kids are little and you're like oh my gosh another fingerprint on the glass but you know they're they're little fingerprints and well so- it's interesting you say that because it reminds me of when my kids when my in-laws were still alive they used to go spend uh, the weekend with them when they were little and there were toys everywhere and uh, my father-in-law used to say, and I miss him so much, he used to say, well, when they're gone, we'll be able to clean up the house. You know, when they go home, we're able to clean up the house, but we're really sad. Yeah. So kind of think of these uh, imperfections of, of just remind you of just try to think of the people and the animals associated with all these dings and and dense and just, um, you know, hopefully it brings a smile to your face. Right. Celebrate them. We talked about, uh, well, the no fuss. Let me just say one more thing about that. I think it's very much an akin with sort of the California style that you can kind of codify it in a certain look. There's a lot of authentic materials. There's a lot of linen. There's a lot of jutes and sizes and things like that. So if you're seeing rooms like that too, that that kind of dips into the whole wabi-sabi look as well. And then nature, bringing in flowers, certainly even branches, sticks, leaves scattered across your dining room table, but you know, not the kind that you, that are all those garish oranges and golds that you buy, <laughs> you know, in a pack for $3.99. Uh-huh, yes. You know, like the real deal that is just so pretty or sometimes if you have a flower and it's wilting a little bit like we just had this pretty rose I picked from the garden this rose will not die it's not white so it's not in the I didn't plant it's not in the front of my house it's over by the trash cans and it just it only gets rainwater and it just blooms this magical color and so I brought some in for the table for dinner and it's was over like three or four days and then the petals all fell and I thought they just look so beautiful laying there so I just left them there until they kind of you know really got sort of cruddy looking and the brown and curled up and then then off they went but enjoy that part of the nature that you bring into your house too it doesn't have to be just perfect just picked or just delivered oh I exactly and the branches I mean these can be bare branches in the winter Uh, you can bring in some beautiful rocks uh, I, I love a rock. I, I love rocks. I do too. And you know, out at the farm, I have a few that look like they've been worked on, 
one looks like it was used as a, a, a implement of like maybe crushing stone or something because it's got a little place to, for you to put your thumb. Well, now that you've told everyone that, you're going to have, they're going to come and <laughs> pour it off the farm. <laughs> so uh, what else? Light. Oh my gosh. We talk about that all the time, right? So natural light, let the light in. We're break proponents of no, no draperies uh, if you can get away with that. Right. And I think too, I, I love the look of plantation shutters, but the problem with them is, and I used to have them throughout my house and I'm not saying get rid of them if you have them, but if you have them to really in, embrace the wabi-sabi, you're going to have to swing them open. I mean, this is really about bringing in as much natural light as possible. And uh, so you really want to be able to throw open, throw back the curtains, pull up the shades, swing open those shutters and get all of that natural light in. That's part of Wabi Sabi. And I do think it does impact your well-being. And there are some studies that say people who are working under fluorescent light can get headaches from them. So, uh, and, you know, just that natural light is just so good for your mental health. So I think that's just a wonderful thing to do. And the old edit really need to edit down the things because a cluttered room is not going to buoy your spirits and it's not going to put you on the road to a wabi-sabi approach to decorating. So, but here's the thing, it's different. It doesn't mean getting rid of everything. It doesn't mean being ruthless with, does this bring me, you know, joy or not? It doesn't mean throwing out everything that you know, your kid ever brought home from school. It means editing it down to something that is manageable for you that you can live with. Not that it's like all stored away or there's so much of it that you can't even enjoy it. A certain number of pieces because that all of that adds to the whole approach of, you know, respecting the age of something, particularly if it's an older thing that you collect or things from your your own childhood or your children's childhood or something like that. All of that works into it. So you most certainly should have things around you that make you happy and that you see. But, you know, maybe use them, make them part of something. And so, and, and don't have so many of them that they're just there for display. Sort of incorporate them more into your daily living and your decor. Yeah. So I'm thinking too, when we talk about this editing, we're talking about editing furniture and accessories. So just fewer things. I think uh, just too much furniture in a room feels cluttered. It feels confusing and it causes, it can cause stress. So this Wabi Sab approach is to not have too much in a room. And I don't think my decorating style in many ways is wabi-sabi because French is not, I don't think of a country French as being wabi-sabi, but I too really spend a lot of time editing and I really don't like a cluttered room or too much in a room. So I think even if you have a different decorating style, I think a lot of these concepts can really be applied to another decorating style. And certainly some of these I really do apply to to my decorating. Yeah, I was intrigued by what you said in the beginning, like which ones do you, do you really feel like you don't agree with or wouldn't work for you? Well, I think it's I think this look is more just kind of natural and very simple mm -hmm. lines and very simple objects, whereas I like a beautiful antique French painting or a French chair mm -hmm. or uh, I'm trying to think a beautiful just very or I love beautifully ornate antique objects and I don't think that that is being wabi-sabi yeah I think that's I, too fussy okay I see that but uh, so much of it I thought really applied to both of our approaches to decorating mm -hmm. well that's what I'm saying I think a lot of this I do this but if you looked at my house, you'd never call it Wabi Sabi because it doesn't right. look. Yeah, it does because it's very French. So, you know, I think I think there are pieces of this that you can apply to any home, right? To make which it just work better, right? So, which sort of underlines even the title of it: is it a trend? Is it an attitude? Is it approach? It's, it doesn't have to be strictly followed. You don't have to do every single thing uh, because I think so much of what you do 
incorporates a lot of this I'm, and myself as well. I also like a, you know, well-turned chair or, you know, some, mm-hmm. a piece of silver with a lot of carving on it or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So probably I don't think anybody would say, yeah, oh, wow, you're so wabi-sabi, like get me some green tea and let's sit on the ground. So they would not feel that way in my house. When I think wabi-sabi, I think very clean lines and I think minimalism and that's mm-hmm. not my house. Right. But I don't think you have to visualize it that way. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. taking, you know, anybody listening today can take what they like from this and any of one, any of these things that we talked about today, if you added that to your decorating approach, I think your house and not only your house, yourself would benefit from it. Don't you? Oh, I think so. I think so. And there's a lot of these uh, concepts that I think are just fabulous for everyone. Like, you know, don't worry so much about the wrinkles. Don't worry if some of your silver is uh, tarnished. I think those are great attitudes. Don't worry if things aren't perfect. I think these are just fabulous concepts and and schools of thought that uh, just benefit everyone to just be a little less uh, stressed about everything being perfect. I don't have to say anything else. That was well said. There is a book on this subject. Uh, I have not read it, but I'm intrigued to pick it up myself. It's called Wabi Sabi Welcome by Julie Pointer Adams. So we can link that in the show notes if you want to get a deeper dive into Wabi Sabi. You're welcome to. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. We received a wonderful email from Kimberly, a listener. Kimberly was so thankful for our recent episode when we talked about creativity and inspiration at this challenging time. And when she particularly was excited when she heard us talking about 
pets and rescuing pets and adopting pets at this time. Kimberly, for the last five years, has volunteered at a place called Priceless Pets Rescue. They are in California. They have three locations, Chino Hills, Claremont, and Costa Mesa for any of our local Cali listeners. You can go right in there and adopt a new loved one. Uh, it's www.pricelesspetrescue.org, and we will put the link in the show notes in case anyone is interested in checking out who's available for adoption or maybe writing a, a donation check to Priceless Pets Rescue. Kimberly, thank you so much for sharing um, your thoughts with us, uh, what you've been doing as a volunteer, and also the wonderful photos you sent of you and your pets. We loved seeing them. <laughs> so, so nice. And um, as my little story about Emmett, pets definitely make you more wabi-sabi. Uh, I definitely <laughs> Whether became... you want to be or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I need to tell you about uh, Molly the Collie's uh, little footprints. And I have definitely become more wabi-sabi since uh, having Emmett and then Edith and Eve. It's good. It's all good. Are you ready for our hot topic? I am. Yes. So we'll include a link. And the title of this topic is, Is This E-Designs Moment? So the point of this article is about, uh, is this the time that people are going to switch from working with designers and decorators in person to doing it much more so online? Because now... Uh, with the coronavirus, uh, it's just, you know, none of us are having people over. We're not having anyone over. We're not going anywhere to anyone's house. And so it, this is just so perfect for it. And so many of the uh, things that you might be asking a decorator about, you can do by internet, by, with photos and with a phone. And in fact, we do these consults all the time. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I do think it's, I think everything, I think that uh, with the e-design, I think this is going to be the moment. And uh, I think there's so many of these services that are more online than in person. I think everything's going to be thriving like that. But what do you say, Kelly? Well, I know that we've been doing this kind of thing, uh, you know, electronically and at a distance for a long time. Even if you think about all the decor blogs and whatnot, you know, you're getting mm -hmm, tips, true. you're getting inspiration. It's not necessarily working one-on-one -on -one with the designer, but we do that too with our consults and whatnot. And by virtue of having your phone and a wonderful camera and email accessible to you, even if you have in-person clients, you work a lot with them through email and, and through just sending, shooting photos back and forth. And it's a great way if you're out shopping for a client just to snap a photo and send it and say, you know, mm -hmm. do you love this? Should I get it? So I think, you know, more and more we've been inching that way. Um, I'm not certain that these full room design companies are really hitting the mark yet. I just not sure that I think the concept is good, but I'm, sh I'm not sure that the technology has sort of caught up with it. But I think now, and I think what the uh, the thrust of this article was, is that people, the public, the consumers are more open to it because people want to work on their houses, as you pointed out, especially since we're all home and you're kind of looking around and like, oh, wow. And you if know. you've been neglecting your house, oh boy, oh boy, you're going right? to be facing that all day long now. Right. I mean, I've certainly gotten a, a bunch of calls. I, I am not um, hurting for clients now, uh, personal clients. So even people that I would normally see because they live locally, we're just continuing or we've started working on things. Uh, virtually during this period of time. So I, I think that it's definitely going to be more embraced. And as the technology catches up with the idea about, you know, sort of laying out a room and all of that, I think it's a great way to do it. I mean, I, I, I think you're the same way, Anita. Even with my in-person clients that I work with here, I don't consider myself like the traditional decorator. Like, oh, I'm not an exorbitantly high hourly rate. I'm not going to say I'm just going to bring you to the trade 
fabrics or, you know, it, it's, that's not the way I operate. I want people to be able to, so like, what do you have in your house? Shop your house, that sort of thing. So I right. think sort of like making decorating more accessible. And if that means doing it online, I think that's all a good thing because everybody deserves to live in a beautiful place, no matter what your budget is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if anybody wants to do a consult with us, mm-hmm. we're here. <laughs> That's we're, right. Just email us. We're here. We're home. We're ready. We can do it. Absolutely. Yes, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> no, we love to look at your house. We love to look at houses. Yes, we do. That is one of our pastimes. So what's your crush? Oh, well, you know, I've been working with a sponsor uh, with my blog, Cedar Hill Farmhouse, called, and the sponsor's called Knock Knock. And... They, I just have to give them a shout out here during my crushes because what they sent me is so beautiful. And it's a delivery service. They bring flowers to you to plant in your, that you plant in a planter in your, on your front porch or wherever. But the beauty of it is, is they kind of work with you and they kind of ask, you know, what's the style of your house? You know, what kind of exposure do you have? Is this a North porch? Is it a South facing porch? Uh, what kind, what is your personal style? What kind of front door do you have? And they select some flowers and put them in a beautiful, a planter. I put it in a pot together, I guess. And then I just slid it out and planted it, uh, with some of that, uh, miracle Grow potting mix. And, uh, it's just, they're, it's growing beautifully now. Anyway, uh, I'll include a link to it, but it's what a great service to have right now because I can't go out to the store to buy flowers. So it was just so timely to get this so it's not cut flowers it's plants they are planted flowers exactly Mm -hmm. and you're going to plant them uh so you have your own planters you're going to put soil in them or potting mix uh the and they recommend the miracle grow potting mix and then you just can take the flowers they send you and plant them in and uh just watch them grow and i planted them probably a week ago and there's already a good bit of growth good for you that's great yeah so it's been fun How about you? Okay, so we've been talking a lot about doggies during this episode. Um, We purchased something several months ago because Edith, not my mother-in-law, my dog, was having back trouble. And she's since recovered and everything's fine. But I think this particular item is really helping a lot. It's called Paw Ramp. And it's a company in California. I think this is all they make, these paw ramps. So it's a ramp. Uh, And I never thought I'd be excited about having a doggy ramp in my living room, but you know, they like to be on the sofa and she jumps on. Is this a ramp up to the sofa? So it's a, it can be up to the bed. It can be up to the sofa. It's adjustable. It's very um, streamlined. It's wood and it has sort of this black sort of indoor outdoor kind of carpeting, but you know, it, it sort of. It sort of blends in. And you know you know how much I must love these dogs and to not mind yes, having them. I was going to say, but you know what? We've got a, a geriatric collie here who's having a trouble coming up the steps on the back porch. Do they do outdoor ramps? Because I'm actually looking into putting a metal, you know, an outdoor oh. one on top of the stairs over to the side. Okay. So that she can walk up. Well, yeah. let's well let's look into that. I don't know yes. because I, I focused in on the one for the inside, but it really isn't bad looking and it kind and it just goes away of it on the other side of the coffee table. So when you walk in, you can't really see it. And I took a little bit of time to teach them. And they even give you some um, tips about how to get your dog to go up and down. Because she, they were all looking at it like, what's that? And the little one who doesn't need it was the only one that was like, hey, this is fun. She'd run and then she'd let her ball slide <laughs> down. See, and- she was showing the others how to use it. Yes. So now Edith's got it. And so because, you know, especially with little dogs, they do develop these back issues, apparently. So, um, so paw ramp so i'll link uh to that in the show notes great idea and we have a great question uh we're this is a vexing question that Mm -hmm. comes up now and again it rears its head so Mm -hmm. jessica d who was recommended to our show by her mom she didn't give me her mom's name but um if you're listening mom and you know that you have a daughter named jessica d Thank you very much for listening and passing us on to your daughter. Great to hear from Jessica. Jessica recently moved into a new home about five months ago, and it is a home that was built in 1999, and it's got the oak trim, you know, Mm. the oak trim, but we've seen it before. We all know what it is, and Mm -hmm. it's really nice wood. 
but it's the oak yeah. trim, stained right. oak trim. So Jessica's asking, how can she sort of work around this, mask it, make it look fresh and updated? It's, you know, they just moved into the house and she said it's a fairly large house. They're not going to take it all out. Certainly her husband, she said her husband, what I think the quote was croak. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I don't know if there's just, we don't want to paint it or he doesn't want to paint it, but there's a resistance to painting it. So obviously, mm -hmm. Jessica, if you really wanted to just make it go away, you could paint it. So, but that being said, that's, you know that. So what you're asking really is how to, what's the workaround? Do we have one? I'll give my answer and then you can give yours. <laughs> is yours going to be a wah, wah answer? You know it is. <laughs> you know it is. All right, because... Jessica, keep listening. Keep smiling, honey. I've got so some keep ideas. Like the... Right, right. Keep listening and then you can hear uh, Kelly's. Because I I'm just saying, how many times have I had a situation where something was not working in the room? And I said, I'm not going to address that because the expense, I'm going to make it work. And sometimes it's just not going to work. And that's the case. Like, for example, when I've had a bad paint color on the wall, it just had to be painted over. As mm -hmm. much as I didn't want to face it, that's the way it was. And the, it's the same with this oak trim. And the house that we rent out in a, our vacation rental in, in the mountains, it's got oak trim too. And I know that when I update it, it will have to be painted. So I'm so sorry to say, but I, my opinion is, and I know Kelly's got a different opinion here, is that there really isn't a good workaround for this. I feel like uh, if the oak, if you like the oak, you're, you're golden. Ha ha ha. But <laughs> just a little levity. But if you don't like it, I feel like there's no way around it. I am so sorry to say that the only way I feel like it's going to, you can really fix it then is just to paint it, but you can paint it yourself. You don't have to pay someone to do it, but that's my feeling. And Kelly is going to come to the rescue, I think, because well, she's got another idea, which I haven't heard yet, but I'm interested in hearing. I did give Jessica a little preview of my thoughts in my response to the email, but I wanted to, you know, I, it's such a great question and a lot of people face it. And, um, I wanted to get your, her to get connected with you for your opinion as well. And I totally So you wanted me opinion. to say mine. You wanted me to say mine so that she'd really appreciate it. I wanted yours. you to be at the downer and then I could blow <laughs> some sunshine. No, yeah, okay. I, um, I totally respect your response because I really think that that, if it's really bothering her and you can't tell from an email, right? I, and you know, and right, you don't right. know like, Ooh, it's the husband like, I love golden Oak. Uh, you know, reminds me of my childhood or whatever. And she's like, I hate, but, I don't know. But, or maybe, but, but it kind of reminds me of my days of consulting. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, clients would say, "I want this," but you knew, you knew they want. They kept saying, "I want A," but I would have to say, "Yeah, but you really need B." You don't. You think you want A, but you don't. Uh, and so I feel like that's kind of a situation like this. So. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. 
Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Right. So we don't, we don't really know where all the pull and tug mm-hmm. is here. Mm-hmm. So I think that there is something that can be done, okay, for Jessica right. or for anyone else. Now, okay. it might – this – this might seal the deal for painting it because really this is really the, uh, you know, somebody else could have another opinion, but this is really the only way I see out of this and to be happy uh, and have it sort of feel fresh. What I told Jessica was in the email to avoid the quote unquote autumnal colors or this are the Tuscan colors, avoid the colors that would have gone with that look. Right. So don't do the greens and burgundies or golds or reds or things like stay away from that because that is going to really just codify the look. That's just going to underline what's going on and sort of stop it in time. So I would stay away from all that. Um, you're you're limited in going with the grays or greases because they just don't really look good with Mm-mm, that. That's not going to work. Yeah, with that color, it's mm-hmm. just really fighting it. Uh, even if you got the warmest of the grays and stuff like that, it's just not going to work. Okay, so what I would suggest, Jessica, is if you're going to keep your oak, then go with a nice crisp white, a very neutral white. You don't want anything that's picking up pinks or oranges or anything like that. A really nice white, true white. It can be in the warmer whites, but not a blue undertone, a nice white. There's a couple like that. Um, one I can link. I think it's a Sherman Williams. That's like, I think it's called pure white. Um, and then bring in natural textures and fibers in that sort of warm caramel tones. So jute rugs, those chunky jute rugs, um, different kind of uh, neutral uh, furnishings and pillows, lots of texture, bring in more of that caramelly, warm, honey colored, goldeny color in baskets and things like that. So work with it, bringing that tone throughout the room or rooms in, in accent pieces that are very textural and keep the rest of it very neutral. I think that will freshen it up. It won't stop it in time in that, you know, the, the era of the, the, gold, the golden era of the golden oak, right? And it will move it forward <laughs> without having to paint it. I think you can pull it off, Jessica. Well, I certainly appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. On that note. <laughs> remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.